I always shower with him. <laughs> Everyone's like, ooh. How did you feel after that, even till today? Fucking miserable. <laughs> I don't do anything with both headphones in. I, I just do one and I keep the volume like really, really low. <laughs> Hello, beats. Welcome to today's vlog. Okay, so my fiance's here, and really, I have this overwhelming urge to just, just to disappear right now into my little egg. Today's vlog is gonna be very different from all the other vlogs. I feel like, I mean, it's gonna be a shit show. I have really, 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 really bad anxiety and I haven't really talked about it. I wouldn't say I hid it from you guys, but more so in the sense that every time I did try to talk about it or I did try to make a video about it, which I did multiple times the past couple of months, it just felt really stupid. Welcome, just another YouTuber with anxiety. Nothing new here. I think the past couple of months, I don't think I've ever had a time in my life where I have felt as much anxiety and had as many panic attacks as I've had in like the past three months. It's been something that I just felt super alone in, which is stupid because the entire time my fiance was like there, my mom was there, Dan Dan was there, and everyone was just trying their best to comfort me. But every single time after a panic attack, I'd be like, I feel so alone in this. If you guys are that and you guys feel alone and you're feeling anxious and panicked and you're having panic attacks, you're not alone, I'm here. I can't fix you though, I can't even fix myself. We'll just be like broken together. We're not broken. Wow, so many disclaimers. <laughs> okay, speaking of disclaimers, um, huge disclaimer. 2020 sucks ass. There's literally a global pandemic. I mean, there's innocent people getting killed and murdered by police officers. There are people getting tear gas for no reason. Apparently there's murder hornets. Like there's just so, there's a locust infestation and they destroy all the crops. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to think of this as like me complaining about 2020 because as of right now I feel super super freaking blessed and I know that compared to a lot of people I have it super easy I have way less to worry about I can work from home that in itself is a blessing and so I just don't want this to be like wow 2020 sucks for me and I'm just having the most hard time in 2020 I wish it's over it's not any of that this is literally just walking you guys down all of the triggering events that happen to what is happening now which is I'm a mess <laughs> I'm a mess and I don't even know how to fix it I mean I'm kind of working on it the books yeah, I mean, I'm working on it really hard and I'm kind of seeing process, I, or progress, I guess that's how to word it. I have trouble with just like being inside of my house, which is where a lot of people feel the safest in their life. So um, I bought some books. It was getting so out of control that I decided to buy some books, which is super against like who I am. Normally I'm like the type that's like, Things will just unravel when they ravel. That doesn't even make any sense, but I ended up buying some books from Amazon. This one is called, wow, The Anxiety and Worry Workbook. This one is called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy in Seven Weeks. <laughs> So I got these books and whenever you buy a book, you have to tell the whole world, you have to tell the whole internet about the books because how else will everyone know that you are just an elevated intellectual being and that your brain just vibrates at a higher frequency than everybody else? How will they know that you read and that you just, I don't even know anymore intellectual words, fuck. I'm a couple chapters into both of them and I started seeing some progress which is another reason why I wanted to make this video like I didn't want to just make a video where I'm like hey guys I have anxiety do you cool great bye <laughs> so with that being said I'm gonna take you guys back to December of 2019 because I think that's where it all started well I'm pretty sure it probably all started way before then nowadays I really identify as like okay I think I'm more on the anxious side compared to other people. But then when I think back of like when I was like 13 or 14, I'm like, that hoe was not scared of nothing. She wasn't scared of kidnappings. She wasn't scared of getting murdered. She was literally just a fearless idiota. And now I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like scared in my own house. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take you back to December of 2019, which was a weird Christmas. I mean, I should have freaking knew it. I mean, I should have known. 
that 2020 was gonna be wacko after that Christmas. That was the first drama that I was ever involved in on YouTube. It kind of all started happening, like literally, I wanna say like right before Christmas and then stopped happening middle of January. So it's kind of like a prolonged drama, which I feel like most drama on YouTube is. It just felt extra long because I was involved. <laughs> I mean, you guys know everything that happened. It was just intense. Um, I felt pretty like violated in terms of like trusting people. I felt like my trust was violated, lots of just home security was violated. I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that I almost felt like dirty in my own house. I don't want this to be like prolonged drama, right? And it was mainly because I just kept second guessing myself, like just questioning myself. Like this wasn't a home robbery. This wasn't someone breaking into the house. It just made me feel like, wow, I can't even trust my own brain to make safe decisions for myself. That was kind of like when I started feeling really, really uncomfortable in this house. And I really don't think it has anything to do with specifically this house, but just because of everything that happened and it had only been a couple months since we moved in and so I was like okay it's gonna be okay like I'm just gonna push through it I'm just gonna not talk about it ignore it if I just like block it out those feelings will inevitably disappear I started having lots of nightmares I was really just so anxious and I started having nightmares about literally everything like this was like super unspecific nightmares just everything and you none of them about yeah. You and talked about there was a man staring at the camera, security camera yeah, and stuff. And yeah. then the other incident happened right after. And then someone died in my dream, like a family member died. Nightmares that were not really fantastical. They weren't me going to Mars and fighting aliens, which seems to be a really common dream for my fiance. <laughs> Literally every other night he's like, Babe, I saved you from like a three-headed alien. And so I was having like these nightmares that weren't really fantastical. They were very home security oriented, personal safety oriented, family life oriented. From that point, I was like, okay, I just need to get peace of mind. I know logically that the people that were inside this house that I no longer trust aren't gonna come back busting through the door. Like that's stupid. It's not gonna happen, but I just, was not feeling that way and I was just so anxious. And so I was like, okay, I need to go get license for a gun. <laughs> but I love how extreme that thought is. So I'm like, okay, I feel like if I had firearms inside the house, I would feel a lot safer. And I go and I get license for the gun and I talked about it, but I talked about it as if it was like very empowering, which it was. It was really empowering, but I will say, going to get license for a gun is not fun. It is not fun and it is not easy. It is not a walk in the park. It's not like buying a new shirt. This thing that's gonna be inside my house is so freaking powerful that it could kill any of us at any moment. This is dangerous. This is very scary. I need to make sure I know everything about it and make sure I don't do something stupid. And then you're like, okay, that means I need to go practice shooting. Then you go get lessons at the gun range and the noise of the gunshots, they are not good for someone who is dealing with anxiety. It's just, Erratic, there's other people with guns in the same room as you. People you've never met before shooting guns in the same room as you. You just get sweaty. You get real sweaty, okay? And then you get sweaty and then you're like, what if the gun slips from my hand because I'm so sweaty? So then you gotta rub the sweat off and then the next time you're like, maybe I should put deodorant on my hands. <sighs> so then we get the gun. And it's in the house. I'm like, you know what? That was a good decision. Like, the more lessons I get, the more confident about this decision I feel. I'm just like, this was smart. I can sleep better at night. I still had nightmares, but I was like, it's gonna go away now. And then it didn't go away. So I had this dream that there was an intruder in our house who was staring at the security camera, just kind of almost like with this emotionless energy just staring straight into the camera and everyone was like that's a stupid dream um nothing's gonna happen you're so dumb stephanie and then um a couple weeks after that <laughs> we had an intruder in our house which i made a whole mukbang on it i'm gonna link it in the description but i feel like 
I feel like most of you guys already know the story. Essentially, we had Justin, our good friend, who was living with us. He had moved to LA at the time, and we had some like miscommunication about like the refrigerator repair guy who was actually going to come the next week. And so we get a knock on the door, and Justin was close to the door, so he opens it, and he's like, "Oh, are you here for the refrigerator?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm here for the refrigerator and so he lets him in and he just was not here for the refrigerator he was he had no idea about the refrigerator he did not work for the refrigerator company he was just a stranger who decided to enter our house and at that point obviously things started getting very very highly tense and just uncomfortable because we knew he wasn't for the refrigerator company almost immediately he had some intentions in mind that we still don't know to this day and i think that really drives a lot of the anxiety is just not knowing thankfully we all came out alive and well no one was hurt but i i was like ready to use the gun which gave me a lot of anxiety too because that made me feel like, wow, that was a very serious situation because I didn't think I would, honestly, when I got licensed to get a gun, I thought it was just for peace of mind. I never, 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 ever, ever really thought that I would ever hold it in my hand with the intention of, okay, I have to be ready to use this in the next 10 minutes or something, you know? because some shit is going down. Like I truly didn't think that. Like I thought just having it would give me peace of mind. And so, you know, I had the gun in my head, like freaking ready for shit to go down because it was just that intense. He ended up leaving because I think he was sensing that we weren't, we weren't just kind of like digging around, right? And that was weird. That I think was probably when the nightmares got a lot worse and all of the anxiety just got exponentially worse. How did you feel after that, even till today? Fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah, it was like a miserable situation because I was already having so many complex feelings about home safety and feeling safe inside this house that after that happened, I just like, I don't feel safe in this house. I mean, even to this day, I don't feel safe in the house, which is crazy because mm -hmm. like we live in this house. This is our house, like we lock the doors. It's honestly, logically, when I think about it, I'm super safe here. Logically, we, I mean, he even sat me down because this was part of the anxiety exercises, which is we think about any way people could break into our house without us wanting them. Yeah, so we talk about all the logical sense of yeah. how you feel, but the, even though logically you are so, so, so secure in here, but you still have anxiety and feel like you're living in a common area. Yeah, I think the way to describe it is the way that I told him like months ago and I still feel this way and I keep telling people like, okay, well, like if you want to understand and you don't understand, this is how I would say. I feel like our house is a Starbucks. I feel relaxed here, but I don't feel safe. And you're always listening. Around. I'm always listening. Um, I never put in both headphones. Like, I, loud music and loud TV noises get me really panicked because I feel like there's going to be noises I can't hear and then it's going to be like something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Something really bad's going to happen. And so I don't listen to it. I don't do anything with both headphones in. I, I just do one and I keep the volume like really, really low and I pretty much just like read captions. The nightmares really started getting bad after that one. But it's never just exactly what you're scared of. But after that, I literally had just back to back to back to back to back to back nightmares about home invasions. And it's to the point where I don't even, I don't understand anything. Like I don't understand why that happened. I also don't understand what his intentions were because logically, if you just hear it, it sounds like, okay, maybe he was trying to execute a home invasion, which means they come into the house while you're home and make you open up safes, make you give them all the valuables, and then they leave. But those just only happen in movies. Like, statistically, those barely happen. With people being home. Yeah, like robberies and burglaries means nobody's home. Mm. A home invasion means that they invade your house while you're home. Mm -hmm. But and then he doesn't even show signs of that. Yeah, he doesn't show signs of that. He, he didn't bring a bag. He didn't bring a bag. He was wearing a bright red hoodie. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a whole team of people. Nobody invades a house by themselves. That's usually like, what? And so I just, 
I feel really uncomfortable not knowing why he was here. He wasn't drugged up, it didn't look like. It didn't look like it was an honest mistake because he was so high off of things. It just felt really, really scary. And I felt like he knew we were home. He yeah. took off his shoes before entering. He had something in his pocket. I feel like the only reason something didn't go down was because we weren't all congregated. Like, we weren't together. And so that just makes me feel like, even though it's super unlogical, once again, I feel like he's coming back. Right. Even though logically he would have came back if he wanted to do something. And it's been a month already. But I just feel like he's going to come back. And it's really dumb. Mm -hmm. And like logically, when I think about it, it doesn't make any sense, but like I have almost like a physical reaction. So they say anxiety, that's how you know you have like problems when you are in a safe environment, but you, your brain is still doesn't feel safe about it. Yeah. We got more guns, <laughs> which really aren't the answer, <laughs> obviously. So we ended up getting more guns. More cameras. More cameras. More sensors. Oh, yeah. Literally, the sensors are so sensitive that a bug flies by and we're all on our phones like... <laughs> you know? After every single time, I start trying to do these actions that make me feel less anxious. And so obviously with the drama situation, it was just trying to move on and focus on other things and get licensed for a gun. And then after this situation, it was like, my camera, it's my gun. And then Corona happened. And when Corona happened, I actually was super, super scared about Corona. I didn't make any videos about it or talked about it too, too much because I didn't want to send people in a panic when I myself don't even know what's going on, right? Yeah. But um, we were pretty panicked because his family was in China at the time that all of this was happening in Wuhan. And so they were there. We we're constantly reading the Chinese news. I mean, his grandparents are older. His younger sister was there. His parents were freaking out in Georgia constantly. Just family group chat bombs of like articles of how this is not gonna end well. And so we were already pretty on high alert before people started actually catching a lot of cases in the US and that just made me feel like again it like put me into that mode of just being so anxious but I tried to act like I could fix my anxiety by doing things mm -hmm. so then I was like oh here's what we got to do we just got to prep we got to have enough food to last two weeks that's what they recommend mm -hmm. we've got to have some day quill that's what they recommend mm -hmm. and I put all of my energy in prepping for the situation and no energy into addressing the fact that I have anxiety issues quarantine happens which quarantine is a very weird thing to talk about because um, I feel really like stupid blessed and stupidly annoyed with myself because we're quarantined in this beautiful house, like literally my dream house. Like when we moved in, this is like my dream fucking house, which just makes this whole situation so annoying to me, to me. Not like annoying complaining, just like. I have space, I have enough space where like if people need a space to live, like my mom came because she didn't feel safe with everyone, you know, in and out of the house in Georgia. Like I just felt so blessed, but at the same time it was like this weird feeling of, okay, I'm stuck at home all day, every day, but I don't feel safe here. And so I think in my head it just got worse because logically I kept thinking to myself, well, it's not like you went out a lot anyway, Stephanie. Like you usually are a homebody anyway, so what's different now? But I think it was just like this anxious feeling of like, I can't escape the place that I don't really feel that safe. And so I started getting super anxious and I think that was at the point where the nightmares were really, really peaking. Like it was really, really bad. Like I would scream. <laughs> I think even like two days ago, I screamed and woke myself up and woke you up. Like I scream and wake up because the nightmares are so bad. And like, it doesn't really feel like I rest. <laughs> like, I don't remember the last time I like woke up and I was like, oh, like I slept really good. <laughs> Which like, again, that's a really stupid thing to complain about, right? How do you feel when you wake up? Like, emotionally exhausted a little bit. <laughs> I don't really like the dark. Like, the minute the lights go off in our room at night, I start getting really, really scared. And I start not being, a like I started getting insomnia and not being able to sleep because when the lights go off, I feel like I have to try extra hard to hear things. And then like I get really annoyed when like the AC comes on in our room at night. 
because <laughs> then I have to try harder to listen to things. <laughs> so yeah, I started getting really, really bad insomnia and really, really bad nightmares. <laughs> Not being able to enjoy a lot of things that I normally enjoy, like listening to music while I shower. I really hate showering alone right now. It makes me really, really scared. Why? I feel like when I shampoo, something's gonna happen. The exact feeling is I'm in the shower and I'm showering and I can't hear anything and there's a home invasion happening outside. Something bad is happening to you guys. And I'm really, really scared that I used to love taking baths, like I love baths. Last Christmas, trying to make me feel better in December of 2019, he bought me like 52 bath bombs, like one for every week because he was gonna make me a bath every week because that was the only thing that was making me feel really like not anxious, right? Um, I hate taking baths now, I hate it. Um, yeah, like anytime I take a bath, I have to make sure that my mom is in the living room Dan Dan is awake and with my mom and my fiance is either in the bathroom or in the bedroom and now I can enjoy a bath if all of those things are happening which it used to not be like that but the biggest fear is like I'll be in the bath or I'll be taking a shower there'll be a home invasion and I won't even know something bad is happening to my family and then I just am really scared that people will break in when I'm naked <laughs> Like, I'm really scared of him, which is really stupid. I always shower with him. <laughs> Everyone's like, ooh. <laughs> no, no, not sexy time at all. <laughs> and so I always shower with him, and then even when we shower, I make sure, like, in my head that we're on a firm rotation. Like, when he's washing shampoo out of his hair, I can't have my eyes closed. And, like, I don't like when he is, like, doing something and busy and not opening his eyes when I'm washing shampoo out of my hair. And so I just, like, need this feeling of everyone needs to be alert. Blow drying gives me anxiety because it's a loud noise. <laughs> I didn't know that this was a result of anxiety until I started going into, like, these workbooks. But I started realizing that I shower a lot in the mornings now, which normally I hated that. I normally love showering at night. And I think it's because like I'm less scared in the mornings is what this book was saying. Like you start just tweaking your habits and your entire life around your anxieties. And it's to the point where you don't even notice. Like you put other reasons for it. Like you're like, well, showering in the morning gives you a fresh perspective and a fresh start to the day. But in reality, it's because you're just tweaking everything around mm -hmm. your anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so I started showering a lot in the mornings and then the bathroom things started happening. I had a dream that I was peeing and I looked out the window and that dude was there. And so since then, I can't pee alone. <laughs> and I always ask my fiance to come to the bathroom with me and he waits outside the door. And we did this for so many months that it became normal. And then I got anxiety that this was becoming normal. <laughs> I was so anxious about that dream and so anxious about home security that I asked my fiance to come use the restroom with me and then it just became like something that's like almost the only way I can relax and pee otherwise I'm like frantic like anytime like I am pooping <laughs> I get really frantic and I'm like get constipated a lot because I try to rush it because I'm so scared <laughs> and I don't want him around and then I got anxiety that this is like my life now. And then I was like, wow, this is very scary because what if, what if my fiance's not around anymore? Like what if something happens to him? Or what if, I don't know, like this, these are literally things I never think about, but like my anxious brain is like, what if one day we break up? Who are you gonna go pee with? Like you'll never be able to pee. And then it was like, what if he goes to the grocery store and I have to pee? And then I got really, really mad at myself. Because I was like, you literally talk about being a bad bitch and you want to promote everyone being a bad bitch. But like, you can't even pee by yourself. <laughs> like, that is like the opposite of a bad bitch. I am also developing a little bit of like social anxiety that normally was never around. 
And I think this is a lot more common. And I think this a lot of people are experiencing during quarantine is I feel like once quarantine is over, I'm gonna have no social skills. And then I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's and I'm gonna have an interaction with the cashier and I won't know how to interact with humans. Which that really isn't like, I guess it's a big deal, but not like that big deal. You're scared to talk to people, right? Yeah. So this workbook kind of makes you really think back of like where things started and then they make you dissect everything logically and they provide all of the resources to do it so it's you don't ever want to just be like well it's just a feeling that I have or I don't know I just feel this way right because feelings aren't facts mm -hmm. and so they kind of make you dissect to where you think this all started any other events that enforced your anxiety. So obviously the drama happened and then the intruder happened, which then enforced this anxiousness, anxiousness of, oh, I shouldn't feel safe at home, right? And so I was kind of like dissecting all of it. And recently, like I started developing little bits of like really weird social anxiety in the sense that like, I'm really scared about what I say to people. I'll respond to some of y'all's DMs and then I will literally go back at night and reread the same DM over and over and over and over and over and over again. Not because I think like I'm so funny, but because I'm like, well, what if they don't like understand my humor? What if they, what if they think like this was kind of mean? And then like, oh, oh, I forgot to put LOL, LOL. Oh, I should have added more emojis. <laughs> And then I also feel the need to like document everything. <laughs> like, I gotta keep this screenshot of this screenshot just in case now. <laughs> Which is so dumb. <laughs> and so, yeah, I started developing that. And I'm really nervous that like I'm gonna go and hang out with people after quarantine's over and I won't know how to hang out with people and they'll be like, wow, she's fucking weird. <laughs> I mean, I went on to Reddit about that one and a lot of people have anxiety about that one. And I mean, there's articles written about how Zoom is actually gonna ruin people's social capabilities. <laughs> Mm. Because talking to video conferencing through Zoom for business is very different from actual in person. In person. I started developing this really bad habit of constantly listening to the news in my free time, which normally I never do. Like I'm not really a news person. My version of news is Philip DeFranco, okay? Like that's my version of news. And now I like watch every single news station nonstop, except for Fox News. But I watch every other news station nonstop. But these news stresses you out so much. Yes, but then not watching it stresses me out. All of that has pretty much <laughs> just kind of snowballed. Before Corona, there was like that conversation that we had a lot of times of like, should we move? But I think now it's like kind of at a place where I don't think that would even solve much. I think I'll just become even more anxious in the new place to make sure history doesn't repeat itself. But that's also like now that we're studying, you know, CBT, if we ever move because of, you know, you don't feel safe, you have anxiety problem at home, that's another thing that's enforcing the anxiety. Yeah. Because now your brain takes it as, oh yeah, you gotta be anxious, you gotta be sit, be careful, you gotta yeah. have these feelings to be safe. Yeah. Also, how does like quarantine make you feel about the world? It just makes me feel so uneasy. In the future? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like literally that feeling of, I can't control anything. Like literally nothing. I think the plus is I'm glad that we have a lot of people with us. I like living with more people. <laughs> Especially Dan Dan and my mom are pretty paranoid too. Maybe it's in our family. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's been nice. Yeah, and so I got these books, right? And I want to share with you guys what I learned from these books. And again, this is probably useless. Like I feel like I don't know if I'm helping anyone, but it kind of helped me. And this is what I learned, okay? Your brain is the queen of annoying, okay? And every single thought that you have, everything's super connected. So pretty much what cognitive behavioral therapy is, which is what these two books are based off of, and that's why it's a workbook. A lot of people actually benefit from doing this alone because I was anxious to go to a therapist during corona time. 
So I did a bunch of research. I called a bunch of therapists who specialized just in anxiety, and a lot of them are cognitive behavioral therapists, which means this is the method that they love using, and so they recommended books like this. Like there's a bunch of workbooks on Amazon. And so essentially it's saying that if you think differently, you feel differently. But then thinking, talking to you about thinking is like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it, it, so the essential message is that everything you think, you feel. And everything you feel is because you think it. And so a lot of the times, people want to change the way that they feel. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel anxious anymore. I don't want to feel this anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to feel not anxious and carefree. Mm -hmm. But it's because they need to change their thinking. Mm -hmm. Once you change that, everything else changes. In order to do that, there's a couple different things that really you have to focus on. It's the fact that you have to drill it into your brain. And I'm still in like the beginning steps of this, so I'm like no expert. You have to drill it into your brain that your thoughts are not facts. They said anytime that you have a thought that is negative, like in terms of I don't feel safe in this house or A, B, C, and D, they said that there's four different tests you have to run it through. And the first test is it, is it irrational? Does it make logical sense? Does it when you say the house is not safe? No. Okay. Because I can't even think of a way to get into this house without you knowing or me knowing and our phones like just blowing up. No, it doesn't make sense. It's a very irrational thought. Mm -hmm. But let's say it's a rational thought. Then the second question is, is it negative? Or what was it called? Oh, is it dysfunctional? And dysfunctional means that, is it going against your end goal? So like that's more for people who like think things like, there's no point in even trying because... I'm gonna get anxious and I'm gonna quit. So like a lot of people would be like, there's no point in even trying to get a raise because I'm gonna get so anxious about asking my boss and then it's just useless anyway. Mm -hmm. Like I'm never gonna ask my boss for a raise even though I do so much more work than anyone that is working near me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they'll do these things and then they'll always say, there's no point, like I'm just, no, there's no point. And right. so those are dysfunctional thoughts which means it literally goes against you. Mm -hmm. Like you're playing you against you. And then the third thing is, is it biased? Is it you being sensitive or insecure? So if you come back from a work event and people pointed out 25 things positive about you, but you're like, wow, everybody fucking hates me because they think that I ate their lunch. But it's like, okay, that seems biased because they listed like 25,000 things that they loved about you. That's like you with your bad <laughs> comments. <laughs> yeah. So the third one is biased. And then the fourth one is distorted. Meaning that you completely don't trust in your own competency because of a mistake. So it's like, That's oh, yeah. we let in someone into the house and now I feel like I can't even trust myself with the safety of this house. If it's one or many of those four thoughts, then it's typically stemming from anxiety and not the real kind of anxiety, which is, hey, there's real fear. Like there's a real issue, there's real danger. If they don't pass these four, then those thoughts don't hold a lot of water. And then what do you do? So then you have to keep drilling it in. And they said, the, the workbook says you write down those thoughts that you have specifically and label them with these four. Um. You categorize them and they can be in multiple groups. Mm -hmm. And then now anytime you feel it, you literally go and look at it and see the labels. And it's easier for your brain later after a lot of practice, it says, because it still isn't working for me. <laughs> I mean, it's been like a couple of weeks, but it still doesn't come like naturally. They said after enough time, like once you keep seeing these exact anxious worries with these exact labels, mm -hmm. you start training your brain to think the minute that you think that, oh, well, that's literally irrational. So yes. um, are you going to shower alone tonight or... Okay, that's another thing that I'm working on. So I recently did this a couple days ago. I have yet to put this to work because I'm scared. And what CBT does, and I keep wanting to call it CBD. <laughs> I'm like, Probably sick shit. <laughs> okay, what CBT does, you create a list, a hierarchy of everything that gives you anxiety. Like your most common anxieties. I mean, don't do everything that gives you anxiety, but it's gotta be relatively vague or very specific if it's a big anxiety of yours. So you could literally have an anxiety of public speaking or I'm anxious about A, B, C, and D, right? You put them on a list and you rank them one through 10. 10 being the highest. And you have to have at least one of every number. So you can't be like one and then 10. 
Like you need to have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could have twenty tens, you could have fifty ones, you know. Mm. But just make a list. And then this is what they call exposure therapy. Make a list and make sure that none of these things are very dangerous. Like literally consult a friend is what they said. Consult people around you. Like, hey, am I gonna die from doing any of these things? Obviously, if you are anxious about skydiving without a parachute, I mean, that's not really anxious. It's just don't like do you it. should be hella anxious. Yeah, if you're because, without yeah like that is normal. They're talking about irrational anxiety, right? right? And you write it all down, and exposure therapy means that you start from your lowest anxiety and you expose yourself to it on purpose. And they said the on purpose part is really important because that puts you in a position where you feel like at least you have the charge to do it. Mm -hmm. So you expose yourself to the number one anxiety mm -hmm. over and over again until you feel like, okay, like that doesn't make, like that makes me realize I'm not going to die. The world is not ending because this happened. So you're going to listen to loud music with both headphones in first. Yeah. Is that scary? Like probably one headphone and then two headphones. No, you're already one headphone. You gotta do but two. But I don't let me get loud. <laughs> okay, all right. One headphone's loud. Damn. So they said keep exposing yourself to it. And then eventually, pretty much the end game that you're looking for is that literally your experiences go against your thoughts. You experienced it so many times and nothing bad happened to you that if you ever have that thought again, your brain is automatically thinking that's so stupid. That like never happened. Okay, I like this. It's like, it's almost like training a dog. Bruh. You hit the bell, let's go pee. <laughs> Me sitting here like, did he just call me a dog? <laughs> you keep doing that and the game, the end game is to eventually get to that number 10 and feel confident. You're probably still going to be scared. You're probably still going to be a little bit of anxious, mm -hmm. but kind of almost like confident. Like, I mean, I know. Yeah, nothing bad's going to happen. So what's, what's like number 10 for you? Invite a stranger over. <laughs> no. <laughs> that seems dangerous. It'd probably be like, like spending an entire day and night alone in this house. Even just saying that out loud, it gives me so much anxiety. Like, it makes me want to just go book a hotel room by myself. Literally rather stay in a hotel room by myself than my own house for 24 <laughs> hours. Is that not stupid? That's crazy. It, yeah, yeah, it, because you're safe in here. I'm probably safer here than in a hotel. For sure, yeah. Where there's so many people who have the keys to the hotel yes. room. Yes. So many employees who have keys to that hotel room. Yeah, but you feel more so safe. So many strangers in a building. But for some reason, I am so petrified. Let's do it. Let's let's work our way there. And one day you're going to do a 24 hours in the house all by myself challenge. I'll be in the hotel. <laughs> you sound too happy. <laughs> anxiety was there for a reason. So apparently anxiety exists so that anytime you're in danger, your body knows. And so it gives you that like mental and physical and emotional rejection to that experience because you're like, oh, I feel like something bad's going to happen. Like if you get close to the edge of a cliff, like your stomach is all like, Ooh, <laughs> and you're all like, oh no, it's, that's literally why anxiety exists. But then, when you have something like anxiety disorder, that's when you just start putting that anxiety onto like literally normal things in life. Talking to the cashier at Trader Joe's. I know some people, which I feel like I can imagine it, there are some people who will recite their order in their head before they get to a drive through I used to do that. Really? When I first learned English. Oh my gosh. Because I get so freaked out about how to say the right words. Yeah. So I have to literally remember how to say each word. The worst is when they start asking you like, What? What? Even, Even in school too, when I first really? learned. Like I will count how many people is in front of me to see which paragraph I'm about to read. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of so get those, my anxiety. I mean, everybody yeah. has different anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Some yours people, is yeah. like 24-7, so that's a but problem. Because it's about the house, yeah. yeah. There's an entire thread of people like practicing their subway orders together. <laughs> no. Was so cute. No. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, like giving, what? Like they're just so nervous. Like it gives them anxiety to go to Subway and tell them what they want on their sandwich. And so they like all talk about it. <laughs> It like breaks my heart because I'm like, I feel, I don't feel that, but I feel the level of anxiety. And then this book said worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario. Whatever you're thinking, ask yourself if you would say that thought 
to your loved one. A lot of the times with anxiety, people get anxious that they can't control it. And so what happens is like in the beginning, you have this anxiety against something like personal safety or home security. And then that anxiety gets so out of control that you start having anxiety that like, God, I'm so stupid. Like, why did that happen? Why did I let that happen? I can't even trust myself, right? Mm -hmm. And then you start kind of talking down on yourself because you're like, this is so crazy. And so then now they're saying, like, if you've gotten to that point, anytime you think something, would you ever say that to your loved one? So if I'm like, mm. wow, Stephanie, you're so fucking stupid. I can't believe you let that happen. Would I ever, ever say that to him? Yeah. <laughs> you're way harder on yourself than anyone else and i think that's with a lot most people no like way way harder on themselves yeah no not necessarily uh, if you can't tell your mama what you were saying about yourself like let's say you're like stephanie you're a fucking idiot sorry there's a mirror here you are a fucking idiot and you would never dare go up to your mother go up to your best friend go up to your boyfriend and say you're a fucking idiot then you sure as hell should not be saying that to yourself. What's that TikTok? If you're gonna call me a this. If you're gonna call me a kid, you better put theater in front of it. My way or to Broadway. <laughs> Sorry. I love the one that's like, if you're gonna call me a bitch, you better put stupid, you better put stupid in front of it because, because if you're gonna call me a bitch. I never seen that one. <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> There was the one that was like, if you're gonna call me a bitch, you better put indecisive in front of it. My way or your way because I really don't know which way. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking died. <laughs> Anyways, come in the bathroom with me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna start using the bathroom by myself. And yeah, I will give you guys updates. Maybe you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really don't even know what today's video is. I just wanted to... It's like gotten to a point where it was just so bad in terms of just anxiousness. And I also felt weird that you guys didn't know about it. Even though technically that's not weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like I needed to tell you guys. And I, I hope that this helps somebody, anybody. And I don't do any justice to this because I literally suck at explaining things. And I also suck at um, getting over anxiety in seven weeks. It hasn't happened yet. So I highly recommend these books. I've, I've just been doing them for a couple weeks and I feel a difference in like, I will now start catching myself. When I think something, I'll catch myself. I don't feel differently though, but I'll at least catch myself, which is the first step. So thank you for looking inside my brain. I know it's all sorts of forked up in there, but um, I just really feel like this is the video equivalent of like cutting my scalp open and like showing you the insides and then like closing it and being like, how is that? Was that, do you want more? <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Bye.